Hello everybody and welcome to a new episode of Trends for Market TV. We hope you all are doing well. My name is Casper Pop, And my name is Trevor Evans. And together we're going to be bringing you the latest news, rumors and statistics from across the world of football. So let's get started with Bayern Munich who secured an unprecedented second treble winning season on the weekend with triumph over Paris Saint-Germain in the Champions League final. They look very happy with this and so they should be. They've become the first team ever to have done this and in doing so secured it with their 500th Champions League goal. Only Barcelona and Real Madrid have managed this before. Their route to the final was total victorious with no defeats or draws coming on the way to the final. And then in the final, they secured it with a 1-0 victory over Paris Saint-Germain in Lisbon. So Casper, did you catch the game on the weekend? Yeah, I did. I really liked it. It was a really pleasure to watch it. Um, I think Paris was really strong in the counterparts and they uh, were really hardly attacking. They were so. very good uh, and defensively too uh, with some last minute saves and uh, Lewandowski hit the post and yeah. in the last five minutes of the first half it really could have gone either way. It was a very interesting game in parts, a bit Definitely dull in others, was. but on the most part it was very good. Uh, and one man who obviously stood out uh, and who managed to uh, steal the winning goal uh, is the youngster, so yeah. 24 years old. Kings of uh, Coman, yeah. Coman, the 24 year old. He was a uh, coming from, from Paris, right? He was like in the whole uh, Paris Academy, uh, his whole youth. Yeah. He was playing for, well, for Paris. He, he made his debut season, and Paris Saint Germain have won the league when he was there, so yeah. I think it's 2015, 2016. Something then went like to that, Juventus yeah. and yeah. won the league titles there. Yeah, for a free transfer, was it? It's just yeah, let him go. Yeah, it was yeah, a free transfer. Well, that's a, that's a bit of a. <laughs> Uh, a mistake on Paris saint It's a part. pain in the ass, I would uh, say. <laughs> yeah, uh, come back to haunt them with with a vengeance. Yeah, uh, and then Bayern, he's won the league every title. So he, Kingsley Coman, in his entire professional career, has never not won the domestic title, which is crazy. That's that's really crazy. And uh, but I mean, he's a, he's a very very good player. But it that's wasn't nice. the only final to take place this weekend. Oh yeah, where the European. Uh the Europa League, the league yes. uh, where Sevilla managed to take ownership of that uh, title by winning it for the sixth time they've appeared in the finals, either the semi-finals or the finals that they've won the competition. Uh, they're well, well and truly establishing themselves as the kings of the Europa League. Uh, and obviously this has given them a position in the Champions League next year as well, uh, with it being a, a prize, an incentive for participating and winning uh, the Europa League as of two years ago, I believe it was. And here, as you can see, we have Jesus Navas. He's the player who has the longest period between his first and last title in European League. Um, 2006, he won it for the first time in 2020, now uh, the last time. Uh, he was 20 when he won it the first time and now is 34. And we have another fun fact for you coming to Christian Eriksen, who is never a player lost both the Champions League and Europa League finals in two seasons. In 2019 with Tottenham against Liverpool and 2020 now with Inter Milan against Sevilla. Uh, so I picked Romelu Lukaku as my favorite striker in a Europa League last week. You did? Uh, I did not. Yeah, you did not. Um, so he scored an own goal uh, in the in the final. Yeah, and, and unless own goals count towards our tally, yeah. then uh, I don't think they do. Do they count negative? Uh, uh, I, but yeah, I, I feel sorry for the guy. He's had an incredible season yeah. and he's been the superstar of Inter Milan. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I feel sorry for him. You were saying earlier yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, he didn't go to the ceremony. I think he felt pretty shy though, but uh, understandable. Stronger next season, I'm pretty sure. Definitely. And speaking of becoming stronger next season, Leicester City have managed to convince James Madison to continue his development and progression at the King Power Stadium. He signed a new contract at Leicester City, extending his stay until 2024. Originally signed from Norwich City for 25 million euros in 2018, Madison has been a revelation in the Premier League, scoring 13 goals and assisting 10 in 67 games. This form resulted in his first England cap and serious interest from Manchester United last summer. His current market value of 55 million euros also reflects this. Arsenal invincible legend Freddie Youngberg has called time on his coaching role at the Emirates as he seeks new opportunities elsewhere. Having had a taste of management at Arsenal upon the departure of Emery before Arteta arrived, the Swede wants to try his hand at being 
in the manager's seat again, having held previous positions at clubs in Sweden. As a player for the Gunners, Freddy played 216 games, scoring 46 goals, and also represented Sweden 75 times, scoring 14. After the promise of the proposed takeover by the Saudi Prince, Newcastle United have returned to reality, announcing the signing of Jeff Hendrick on a free transfer. The 28-year-old Republic of Ireland international has scored two goals and 54 international appearances, left Burnley at the end of the previous season, having joined from Derby for a then club record fee of 11.8 million euros. During his time at Burnley, Hendrick played a total of 122 games, scoring nine goals. Most recently assigned a nine million euro market value, Newcastle have made a solid addition to their ranks. The Toon Army will be relieved to get this one over the line as Matty Longstaff signs a new deal to remain at St. James's Park for another two years. The homegrown local lad made his breakthrough last season, playing 15 games and scoring three, including the winner against Manchester United on his Premier League debut. The 20 year old Englishman has a current market value of 5 million euros, but if he keeps progressing at this current rate, he can easily multiply this in the next two years. Another local player signing for his boyhood club, albeit under different circumstances, is Aaron Ramsdale, who is returning home to Sheffield United after a couple of years at Bournemouth in a 20.5 million euro deal. In 2017, he moved from Bramall Lane to the South Coast for a fee of 950,000 euros, which shows good return on investment. The 22-year-old goalkeeper burst into the Cherries' first team last season, ironically making his debut against his new club, keeping some well-seasoned internationals such as Begovic out of the team. Staying in Yorkshire and potentially lining up alongside Ramsdale next season is Phil Jagielka and Jack Rodwell, who have both signed one-year extensions to their current deals. 38-year-old Jagielka, who has also returned to Sheffield United in 2019 after a 12-year stay at Everton, made 10 appearances last season. As for 29-year-old Rodwell, the once upon a time future superstar who began his career at Everton before a big money move to Manchester City, joined the club in January and has only managed to make two appearances. A little bit of a strange one here, and newly promoted to the Premier League, Fulham have snapped up 23-year-old US men's national team left-back Anthony Robinson from Wigan for a fee of 2.1 million euros, taking advantage of Wigan's financial turmoil for a player valued at 3.5 million. Robinson was close to joining AC Milan randomly in January, only for the deal to fall through at the last minute. Over in France, a young superstar who isn't on his way to Real Madrid is Eduardo Camavinga, with a 17-year-old opting to stay at Rennes for at least another season. He cemented his place in the first team last season, playing 36 games, scoring one and assisting two from the defensive midfield position, which saw his market value explode from a respectable 4 million euros to an incredible 42 million euros within nine months. The decision is very wise from the young man, who will undoubtedly continue to get plenty of game time at Tren and develop as a player. But what do I know? The highest level I played was in the Southern Amateur League in London for the third team of the old Agatonians. So, what do you think of the completed deals there, Kaspar? Uh, Kamavinga really gets my attention. I've signed him on Football Manager and I've brought him through the ranks. Uh, if Real Madrid comes calling and you're a 17 year old, what would you do? I would probably not go to Madrid because um, as a 70-year-old, you might be spending your time on a bench. Yeah, so, well, uh, yeah. Martin Odegaard, for example, yeah. there's a Norwegian yeah. sensation and so just disappeared. But yeah, I, yeah. I think he's got a big future. And I'm really looking forward to seeing him progress yeah. in France and then... Then move on, so maybe. maybe yeah. in, in Why not to the Premier League? Maybe. Potentially. So we're heading over to Chelsea and coming straight to the rumour mill. And uh, Chelsea have signed in the last days quite a few interesting players. And so they are reaching out to Leicester City's left-back Ben Chilwell. The Athletic reported on Friday that the 23-year-old has already agreed personal terms and that a series of medical checks have already been completed. Chelsea are expected to pay around £50 million for the left-back, who's current market value is around 14 million. According to a report by The Athletic as well, Chelsea are in advanced talks with Paris Saint-Germain defender Thiago Silva, whose contract expired after Sunday's Champions League final. Chelsea have been in talks with the 35-year-old Brazilian, who will leave the Parisians after eight years and seven championships this summer. But The Athletic was careful in saying that despite the advanced talks, a deal was not concluded yet. 
And straight over to Kai Havertz, the 21 year old from Bayer Leverkusen, might go to Chelsea. As built and sport built as well, as transfer expert Fabrizio Romano report that Londoners have agreed to transfer fee of 80 million with Bayer Leverkusen, which can rise to 100 million due to possible add ons. This would make Harvards up to 47 million more expensive than Timo Werner, the most expensive German football player until now, who has been part of the Blue squad since July 1. So Trevor, what are you thinking about Kai Harvard? I think he's like a really, really talented youngster. He's, and, gonna, uh, he's got a huge future ahead of him. Uh, and if he does go to Chelsea, as seems to be expected, he's going to be surrounded by some incredible players. And they, they seem to be going through some second rebuild, some sort of second revolution after Ibrahimovic first joined Chelsea in 2008, I think it was. Yeah. They signed lots of good players. Uh, and they're going through that again with young manager Frank Lampard leading the way. Uh, so there's going to be some... Very competitive next season. I think it's going to be really interesting. And uh, another rebuild that we have is at FC Barcelona at the Camp Nou. Uh, Suarez was told to leave by Koeman if he wants to, even in this season already. Um, the Uruguayan was not named by President Jose Maria Bartomeu among the players who would not be sold by Barcelona last week and has now learned his fate. This weekend, the 33-year-old said in an interview that he was told directly by the club that he's not needed, although it seems he will now have to prepare an exit from the Camp Nou. Leeds are considering a move for Divock Origi if they fail in their bid to land top target Odson Eduard from Celtic. The Premier League new boys are also keen to take Ryan Brewster on loan from Liverpool. Origi is open to a move this summer as looks to secure himself regular first team football and Leeds have made an inquiry about taking him. So we're going to Spain, Valencia may be forced to cash in on their star players this summer and Leeds United could take advantage by making a swoop for Rodrigo. The Whites are reportedly keen to make the 29-year-old Valencia striker Rodrigo Moreno the marquee signing of the summer transfer window. The Spain international has established himself as one of the standout forward players in La Liga in recent years. Still in Leeds? Leeds eyeing stunning swoop for Bayern Leverkusen's Leon Bailey. The 23-year-old Jamaica international enjoyed an impressive campaign with the Bundesliga side last season, scoring seven times in 33 games and providing further three assists. Despite not being a regular start for Leverkusen, Bailey came up with moments of brilliance, including a match-winning brace against Bayern Munich away at the Allianz Arena back in November. And stay in England. According to the Times, West Ham will release Jack Wiltshire under contract until 2021. The Englishman's constant injuries make his participation with the team impossible. The Gunners sold the 31-year-old to West Ham in 2018 summer market, but he has only played 18 matches in these two campaigns due to his constant injuries. Stay in England. Manchester United are one of the three clubs interested in bringing Aaron Ramsey back to the Premier League this summer, according to reports. Ramsey left England last summer after 11 years at Arsenal. The majority of his appearance for Juventus have come to a substitute's bench. Following their elimination from the Champions League, Juve's new manager Andrea Pirlo is set to call a squad this summer and Ramsey is one of several players. It's claimed that West Ham and Crystal Palace are interested in a midfielder, but the Serie A champions would demand 25 million to let him go. Heading south to London, Arsenal want Hussam Awar after being eliminated by Bayern Munich. Olympic Lyon will not play in a UEFA competition next season. As a result, Olympic Lyon will be forced to sell several of their best players, among them Hussam Awar, who has now been linked to Arsenal. Thanks, that, Kasper. Cheers on that. All good. Uh, but on to the next segment where we're going to look at the market value update, the next installment. And we're heading over to Italy in the Serie A where we're comparing the top 11 increases and putting them into an 11 for you. And first up is Donnarumma, who's in goal for AC Milan. And he's now no longer a surprise. One of the most important players in Milan's outstanding phase after the lockdown. At the age of 21, he has already broken the 200 game mark for Milan, keeping a total of 76 clean sheets to date. Into Milan centre-back pairing, De Fri and Bastoni, who have both increased their market values by double digits. On the left, we have Teo Hernandez, who increased his value by 30 million euros from AC Milan up to 45. On the right, from Napoli, we have Di Lorenzo, increased it by a solid six. 
In the middle of the park, we have the machines of Benacer from AC Milan, who increased by 10.5, and Barella in the central midfield position for Inter Milan, who increased his value by 14. Up top, we have an attacking four, and we're going to start with Bolga, who's had quite the season and developed into one of the most interesting players in Serie A at Sassuolo after ditching Chelsea reserves in search of first-team football. Napoli and other top clubs are watching the 23-year-old intently. He is fast, a competent dribbler, but also with good vision and reading of the game. We also have Kulusevski on the right from Parma for an 8.5 million euro increase. Leading the attack, no surprises here, Romelo Lukaku of Inter Milan, who increased his value by 17 million to 85 million euros. And the Belgian has been the superstar for Inter Milan this season with an astonishing 34 goals and six assists. He equaled the club record of Brazilian legend Ronaldo, who also scored 34 goals in his debut season in 1997. Joining him up top, we have Dybala, who also remains to be one of the most talented individual players in Serie A. Unfortunately, he can't always deliver, very inconsistent, and that's why he didn't have too much success in the Champions League this season. Otherwise, his value has gone up even higher. A transfer target of Tottenham or Manchester City, perhaps a change of scenery will help him unlock his potential. Here's a quick summary of the old market value to the new market value with a solid increase of 122 million euros. Some worthwhile mentions who didn't quite make the top 11, we have Ronaldo, whose market value has increased despite his old age with some good performances. Up next, Gonzalo Higuain decreased his value by 9.5 million euros after his loan seasons at Milan and Chelsea. He hoped to return to Juve stronger to earn a place on the Sarri, but his season was not very convincing and he was a pretty weak overall. Pirlo is no longer planning with him and Juve is in negotiations to cancel the player's costly contract. Up next is Inter Milan's Christian Eriksen, deemed to be one of the unluckiest players in football history, having lost the two finals, has found no place under Conte. From a player with his market value, you simply have to expect more, even though his acclimatization period was short. His value dropped by 8 million euros from 68 to 60. So a very strong 11 there, Kasper. Uh, are there any names you'd have expected to have seen in there, perhaps? I thought, like, maybe Ciro Immobile. He's one of my favourite Italian players. So. Right, OK, cool. I don't think I have a favourite Italian player. I need to get one. Yeah, you should. You should definitely. <laughs> so um, we got something, last but not least, we got the European uh, teams with the most titles in the 21st century for you. So that's, like, the statistics for this week. First of all, we're going to start with Celtic Glasgow, which have 33 titles in all. Last title champion this season. On the fourth spot, Shakhtar Donetsk with 33 titles as well. And the same, they made the title this year as well. On the third spot, Portuguese FC Porto with 34. And the last title with the cup win in 2019-20, so the same season. And then on the second spot, FC Barcelona with 39 titles and the last title was the champion title in 2018-19. And top spot, as you could imagine, Bayern Munich with like astonishing 41 titles. And the last title was obviously the Champions League title from last weekend. And as you can see, we have like the Bayern with like two above Barcelona and then Porto and the other one comes down. The best English team is Manchester United with 25 titles and the overall winner, world leader, is El Ali Cairo. Uh, the club has 42 titles, so even one more than Bayern Munich. So that's all we have for you this week. Thank you for joining in. And if you enjoyed the show, please subscribe to the channel below. Yeah. Please subscribe, leave some comments as we want to know what you think about the show. If you have any ideas, just leave a comment and uh, right, that's it. We look forward See to hearing from you soon. Take bye care, bye. guys. Bye-bye.